Thanks very much, Herb. Uh, uh, I, I'm humbled to be at the panel where the college, uh, where uh, Richard Vetter's uh, Center for College Affordability and Profitability is represented, and uh, InsideHigherEd.com uh, is here because of the transparency that they uh, that they give to us in terms of what's really going on in higher education and particularly during this last period when the Bush administration moved to federalize higher education, we eagerly read every uh, uh, issue of the InsideHigherEd.com to know what they were attempting so we could attempt to be there and head them off. But I also am impressed by Herb London who once told me that he met with a United States Senator who will remain unnamed <coughs> And in the, in, the, in the course of this discussion, the senator was so um, abusive, not to Herb, but to a young intern, that Herb turned to him and said, Senator, if you continue, I'm going to grab you by, you th by the throat and throw you out the window. <laughs> in some jurisdictions, that's a felony. <laughs> uh, given I, that I have 20 minutes, I'm going to talk about uh, four or five <laughs> things. Uh, the... The promise of new technologies, which is a long story, uh, the, why new technologies haven't achieved their promise, which is a, a brief story. The answer to your questions for the first seven are, is no. Uh, technology has not had an impact on higher education to the extent that it could if, if things were run properly. Um, I, I'd like to talk about the obstacles to this reform, the financial consequences of these obstacles, and the missed opportunities reformed primarily by the Bush administration. Um, all of us know something about the Internet. Uh, we can buy our car at CarMax. We can do our banking at eBank. We can buy our stocks at E-Trade. Uh, we can do uh, any number of things online. Uh, but uh, universities have been slow to adapt to these new technologies. And as a result, the creative destruction at Schumpeter uh, uh, said happens in a market economy uh, isn't happening in higher education and, and I think that will be the case for a very long period of time. Uh, uh, Andrew said that uh, uh, or Richard's uh, better mentioned that old, uh, educational institutions are old institutions and I think you'll find that the, more, the older an institution is the more resistant it is to change. Consider for example the US Postal Service uh, at Christmas when the lines are out the door I always shout wouldn't this work better if it were privatized uh, uh, nothing has changed even though I do that once a year many, for many Christmas <laughs> the US Securities and Exchange Commission uh, which isn't as old as the Postal Service uh, is basically deterring uh, um, uh, the, uh, the offering of, of IPOs of, of new stocks because of the process that's so regulated it's extremely difficult, it's expensive and instead of opening up uh, our capital markets they're constraining them the Internal Revenue Service about which we know a lot isn't changing much except adding to the regulations making it more costly for us to do business Compared to higher education, however, the Postal Service is, uh, is a weakling. Every uh, college has tentacles into state legislatures, governor's offices, the United States Congress, the Department of Education, and the White House, with the result that they can stop reforms whenever they appear. Uh, Jeff Sandifer, who's the founder of Acton MBA, which is probably one of the best MBA programs in entrepreneurship in Austin, Texas, has, has said, that no one would place a $10 million bet on a regulatory gamble. What he means is that uh, instead of starting his, uh, uh, his uh, institution from scratch and getting it accredited, he latched on to a succession of regionally accredited institutions so he could operate from day one with regional accreditation. Uh, Yorktown began in uh, 2000. By 2001, we had admitted our first students, and we had earned not more than $200,000. Eight years later, when we, re when we were given national accreditation in June of 2008, we had earned $1.6 million. By the time that we're regionally accredited, hopefully by 2015, uh, the effort will have gone on for 15 years and will probably have cost $2.5 to $3 million. Uh, so as a result, 
those who are really smart don't engage in the startup of, of um, uh, internet institutions. And that's too bad because those of us who have something to say to students and would like to be a, uh, to offer a, uh, a course, a, a degree program online ourselves simply can't do it. I mean, we don't want to spend 15 years uh, attempting to get these things accredited. There is outside an example of one successful institute, the Institute for World Politics, which is probably the best boutique national, graduates, uh, national security graduate school in the country, uh, which finally attained regional accreditation by middle states after an effort of 15 years. Um, so what, is the, what, are, what are the smart guys doing? The smart guys happen to be also to be wealthy. I don't know if there's a connection between intelligence and wealth, but they are systematically buying regionally accredited institutions. Uh, they are doing it uh, with a lot of money, uh, somewhere in the order of 500 to a million to a billion dollars, uh, highly uh, well capitalized, and their names are, are, are almost household names: Michael Milken, uh, Larry Ellison, uh, Randy Best, the Becker brothers who founded Sylvan Learning, uh, and and some others. The uh, uh, because of the economic downturn, it's likely that that a number of non profit colleges that are regionally accredited will not be able to meet payroll. And so the price of, of purchasing a regionally accredited university will decline. Uh, last week, I sent a letter to 50 institutional uh, funds that invest in higher education, asking them for $10 million to buy my first nonprofit university that's regionally accredited. The idea is once you're regionally accredited, and you have a platform for all of your internet-based courses is to uh, market them, not from the campus, but wherever anyone wants to go to take these courses. The, the obstacle to use of all these new technologies is not, um, is not uh, our, the technologies themselves or the will of any number of people who would like to be a university president uh, or to have a, pr uh, a program of this sort, but the political obstacles to it, namely the accreditation process. The accreditation process is burdensome. It is intended to protect the existing institutions from, from competition. Uh, it is protected by the, uh, by the regulators, and it is increasingly being used as a means by which to regulate what we do and teach. The president of um, SUNY Purchase, uh, SUNY um, uh, 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 Buffalo, called for an increase in tuition uh, about two or three weeks ago. And I responded in a little essay in the uh, Yorktown Patriot, which is our campus newspaper, with some suggestions for what he could do to keep, contain tuition costs at SUNY Buffalo. Uh, his complaint was that the in-state tuition isn't representative of the real cost of higher education. It's something like $5,450, and he wants to raise it to $6,000. Uh, I think that $6,000 is probably a decent price for a college education at a research institution like SUNY, so let's grant him the uh, ability to, to raise tuition. But what can we do to drive tuition costs down? One of the things he should do is reach out to the high schools in the state of New York and, for, and to offer to any high school student in, in New York State an opportunity to earn two years of college credits online while in high school. And then to admit them to SUNY upon completion of a year or two years of, of college and, 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 and cut off the undergraduate program from the freshman and sophomore year and make it into a senior college where you only admit junior and senior students. Uh, you, um, I suggest in that article that he should also audit all university programs to see which ones are contributing to the, to the, uh, uh, the upkeep of the institution and to engage in a discussion with faculty and staff to, uh, to reach a consensus, consensus on which programs should be kept and which are intrinsic to the university's mission and which should be cut off. I suggest that he bring back the core curriculum uh, that he used Richard Vedder's Vitter, uh, proposal that tenure be, uh, be uh, optional, that there should be a two-track payment system whereby tenured faculty receive less 
and faculty who are willing to serve without tenure. And lastly, I suggest that he look at the problem of diversity, intellectual diversity, in the hiring of faculty at SUNY Buffalo and adopt Jerry Ford's program of a Team B approach so that whenever a major appointment is made, the faculty will go into its search and come up with its discussion, but there will be an independent Team B to review the process and come up with a different selection. Thank you. Thank you.